In 1983, TSR released the now iconic adventure module I-6 Ravenloft. Written by Tracy and Laura Hickman, with art by Clyde Caldwell, this adventure module is considered to be in the top three, top five of all time. Personally, I find it to be the greatest of all time. And before you call me crazy, here are a list of accolades to prove my point. It spawned a sequel, a campaign setting, a novel line, video games, a board game, trading cards, and even toys. It was remade in 2nd, 3rd, and 5th editions. Strahat has become the face for the Dungeons & Dragons brand, and every year playing Ravenloft on Halloween has become a spooky tradition for gamers everywhere. The adventure itself is very simple. The heroes arrive in the land of Barovia, which is being terrorized by the vampire lord Count Strahd von Zerovich, who seeks to turn local villager Irene Koena, who he believes to be the reincarnation of Titania, a woman he loved in life, and he wants her as, her, as his vampire bride. Players will defend the village of Barovia and have an encounter with the gypsies, which will lead them to Castle Ravenloft and a confrontation with Strahd. There are three reasons why Ravenloft is such an iconic adventure. First, it's gothic setting. Barovia is Dungeons and Dragons version of Transylvania and Strahd is their Dracula. Plain and simple. And it works. From the dark and eerie land filled with gypsies and superstitious villagers to the haunted castle Ravenloft and its vampiric lord Strahd, the module oozes goth. Back in 1993, many people, myself included, desperately wanted a gothic adventure set in the world of D&D. And we finally got it. The second reason is replayability. A game mechanic called the Fortunes of Ravenloft was introduced. While exploring the land, the players have an encounter with the gypsies and have their fortunes read. This determines where certain items are and where Strahd will be and what his end goal is. To ensure every game is somewhat different and adds flavor, this is what it does. And also as well as adds a gothic mood to the game. The DM uses a deck of playing cards to do this, which was pretty innovative for its time. The third reason is Strahd himself. His tragic backstory is fleshed out really well and does not feel like the typical NPC villain. Nor does he play like one. The DM is to play Stride as his player character. He never just sits at one location waiting for the players to arrive. He is constantly moving around using hit and run tactics on the heroes knowing full well he is in control. This keeps the players on their toes never knowing when Stride will strike. And again, for 1983, this was a new concept. The adventure is for 6 to 8 players, level 7 to 5. The first third of the module is a sandbox type, where the heroes will explore the land of Barovia and discover what is going on. The rest is a state dungeon, straight dungeon crawl with the players exploring Castle Ravenloft. This will not be easy, for the castle is filled with many monsters and traps and a threat of strides striking at any time. It is entirely possible for a DM to wipe your party out, so we have to use discretion or he will risk having a bunch of angry players on his hands. The adventure module itself is 32 pages with four cover maps. The maps are done really well and show the true scale of the castle. The text is well written and gives plenty of detailed descriptions of the castle and the lands of Barovia. The art by Clyde Caldwell is very good and his cover of Stride standing on top of Castle Ravenloft is truly iconic. I remember seeing this module on the shelf of my local bookstore and its cover drew me in and I asked to have my mom for six bucks to buy it, which I did. And I've never looked back since. So as you can probably tell, I love the module, but would I recommend it? While not necessarily for the Ravenloft campaign setting, in fact this module would be remade for the Ravenloft campaign setting as House of Strahd, with an updated version of both Strahd and Barovia. This classic adventure is a piece of history, however. For any serious fan, sass, collector, 
no matter what edition of Dungeons and Dragons you play, you should have this as one of your crown jewels in your collection. I still have my beat up copy and treasure it, even if only if I run it once a year. It is a piece of history worth owning. At the time, Ravenloft was a critical and financial success. Nearly 40 years ago, Tracy and Laura Hickman created an iconic adventure which has withstood the test of time and will last another 40 years. If you have an original copy of Ravenloft, kudos to you. If you don't, try and get one in our pieces before the mist of Ravenloft come for you. Under raging storm clouds, a lone figure stands silhouetted against the ancient walls of Castle Ravenloft. Count Strahd von Zarevich stares down a sheer cliff at the village below. A cold, bitter wind spins dead leaves about him, billowing his cape in the darkness. Lightning splits the clouds overhead, casting stark white light across him. Strahd turns to the sky, revealing his angular muscles on his face and hands. He has a look of power and of madness. His once handsome face is contorted by a tragedy darker than the night itself. Rumbling thunder pounds the castle spires. The wind's howling increases as Strad turns his gaze back to the village. Far below, he had not beyond his keen eyesight. A party of adventurers has just entered his domain. Strad's face forms a twisted smile as his dark plans unfold. He knew they were coming, and he knows why they're here. All according to his plan. He, the master of Raven, will attend to it. Another lightning flash rips through the darkness, its thunder echoing through the castle's towers. But Strahd is gone. Only the howling of the wind, or perhaps a lone wolf, fills the midnight air. The master of Ravenloft is having guests for dinner, and you are invited. <laughs>